we're going to see what this is all about today. <clears throat> Saker mini chainsaw. Hey, come on. Get out of the way. I got nothing but trees to saw here. So we're going to uh we're going to fire this thing up and see what it can do. It's a little baby, but it's got a 20 volt battery. And uh I don't know, man. I'm a little excited to see what it can do because this I got a lot of little work stacking up and I have a uh, a chipper, but there's a stage in between the saws and the chipper where I was actually kind of hoping I had something a little more portable. And uh man, my goodness, will you get out of the way? Uh they these guys sent me a saw. Uh they told me to do a review, see how I liked it. And it's really funny because something like this is 100% in the area of what I'm needing right now to make this a thing, you know? So, here we go. I'm going to charge this thing, and we're going to fire this thing up, and we're going to dive right in. So basically, how it works is we get a pile of crap like this. We use other saws to render it down, and then, then we turn it into piles like this. So, the chipper can handle, I think they said up to an inch and a half, but you see this guy right here, and there's a bunch of other ones in there. They're, they're too big for the chipper. Like, that right there, way too big, right? So... If I were to chip this, I would use this saw when you get these big pieces to strip it down and make yet another pile. Now I might burn this. That was kind of why I set this here. I might torch this one and see, I got another one right here. <clears throat> uh, I might torch this one too. But if you look over here, this one a little too close to the hose, a little too close to the building. Not digging it, right? I might have to go through this one. This is all stuff I'll do later because I have another pile that's more visible and I'm doing it uh, for eyesore status first. So this is gonna have to wait. I'm not gonna do this one today. This is just an example. So when I jump into this, you'll see a pile of stuff and I'll start sawing stuff up, but just giving you an idea of where this saw might shine. Another good example. Uh, this is where I left off on this thing last. Um, I'm eventually going to have to go back and finish this off. But if you see, there's stuff in the way here. That's where the mini chainsaw would come in handy. Because you could go in and neuter all this stuff and get rid of it to allow access to this. Uh, same thing over here let's say while the big saw is on something else if you had another set of hands they could strip all this so all you had to do was straight cuts once you got to it if you're looking for making cuts like this <clears throat> this is not going to be the saw for you my friend but the little stuff which there tends to be more of a suburban uh, <clears throat> tree pruner, you know, if you're pruning up and snapping down some, uh, some fruit trees in the backyard or something, you don't need a giant saw. It's, uh, for most people, this is a reasonable sized saw and I'm going to see exactly how big I can go here before I start doing the, uh, the fine work that I'm talking about now. I figure right when I jump into it, I'll, uh, while it's got a full battery, I'll kind of do a bonsai charge and see. I'm going to have to make sure this thing's oiled up. So first observation on this. Uh, it claims to that you need to oil the chain, which obviously you do. There's not an oil reservoir. And I would think for something like this, there would be. So we're going to see how that pans out. Uh, I got some... Uh, I'm going to use some pretty high uh, heat 
zero friction uh, oil. It's actually for a gun, but uh, it's, it'll get into these little cracks and penetrate stuff. I'm gonna try to use some thinner stuff to get in here because I gotta, I wanna get into the track, you know, between the, the chain and, and the bar here. And I wanna get all these joints and that little applicator there might help me with that because I think you have to go, of course it's not gonna show. I think you have to go in between the links of these chains here. So, uh, wish me luck on that, right? Okay, so the book does not tell you this whatsoever. But, when you first plug the battery in, it has a red light, and when it charges, it gives you a green light. I just read through pages and pages of machine language to try to figure out if it was going to do that or not. Well, it does do that. But they don't tell you that it does that. So, you heard it from me first. So, using my old uh, surgical applicator here, I put uh, some drops of oil in between every link, and... Uh, threw some in the crack between the, the blade and the bar here. And the first time I did it, it was in there. Uh, I thought maybe it needed a little more, so I did it one more time. And then when I turned it on, it threw some, uh, some oil out and I figured that was probably good enough. So I'm gonna play it by eye and maybe even possibly also by ear to uh, see if this will need more as we go. All right, we're gonna see what this thing can do with a sizable piece here and why not start with this beast right here right safety first <laughs> That's, that's my first time actually cutting with this thing, man. And, uh, I mean, that's no joke. And it, it really wanted to, to eat into this stuff. So, I'm thinking this might be, might be a go. So far, it's making short work out of this. You want to grow too close to the fence? For cutting these annoying saplings, that's really what this thing is kind of made for, you know? And, uh, 
for the most part that's what I would use it for but this uh I wanted to saw this pine up here just to kind of show you that it could do it you know and I got bored after uh, a few pieces here you know I kind of want to burn this battery up just to see how long it lasts so maybe I'll find some work I'll cut all this shit down here I guess you know I I rolled out of bed I might as well do something right we got some big ones over there that's a little maybe a little too much for the tools on the job here, we'll stick with these guys. So I burned the battery out, and log-wise, that was my haul. Now that, that's by no means uh, an overnight for a campfire, you know, but it is a decent bonfire, for sure, you know, if that's what you're using it for. It gave up on this tree, I started, uh, started taking it down. I was going to see how far I could go before it gave up the ghost, and that was it right there. Uh, I cut a bunch of these trees here. I thinned that out some. You can see a bunch of them laying over there. I haven't thrown them out yet, but I will. I'll do that later. That's a great job for later. Still got a pile of crap right here, but I just wanted to get the meat and potatoes out. Okay, so my impression of this saw... Uh, let me collect my thoughts here and I'll, I'll get with you in a second. So what is my opinion of this thing? <clears throat> well, longevity is the one thing that I'm not reviewing here. I don't know how long and how durable this tool is going to be. That's in the unknown category still, okay? So if I said, go ahead and get this saw, you know, you're going to pass this down to your children and your children's children. Well, I can't say that, obviously. I've only used it once. But what I will say is the power, I was actually taken back by how powerful it was. Uh, versatility, this thing could do way more than I thought it was going to do. Uh, for bug out bags slash backpacker slash camper, this thing, uh, this is a game changer for that kind of stuff because it weighs nothing i'd say with the battery it feels about like a glock you know uh if you carry one of those things around every day you can carry this you know you won't notice it in a backpack it would almost be negligible uh the battery you see you saw the battery life how long it lasts if you were going with smaller vegetation you know smaller branches smaller limbs this thing would have lasted longer I was almost misusing this, but I was doing that on purpose just to see if it would do it, and it did. So, my hat's off to that. I, I really can't, um, I was expecting less from this thing, let's put it that way. Uh, I got it stuck once, and it is right on the allowable limit, so I'll, uh, I'll test this, I'll try tightening this before I call it a day, and, uh, if I have any problems with that, I'll let you know. And while we're at it, it does come with a screwdriver for adjustment, uh, your uh, socket, and it has some oil. Clippers and stuff like this always come with oil, and I never trust it. I always use my own stuff because I'll spend money on good oil, but I mean, shit, man. In a pinch, you got a whole bottle of this stuff. All right. Everybody's favorite part of school was taking shit apart this doesn't smell like formaldehyde so it's a little better uh here's how you adjust the blade put your screwdriver in here you turn it this way we'll make it tighter this way we'll make it looser uh, this will sit in the channel and there's a hole that it lines up with i'll get this thing lined up because i need two hands and then i'll show you yeah, got it tuned up, tight as a drum. It's, uh, I mean, it goes to the direction it says. I'm not going to lie, I had to do it once or twice. It just felt wonky when I had the bar on. But, uh, <clears throat> I think I wasn't lining it upright or something, because this last time I, I threw it on there, it just tightened right up like it was supposed to. So, I think it was a me thing and not a, 
not a saw thing. But yeah, little maintenance and this thing is ready to rip pretty much. I, anytime I do any kind of a yard clearing, backpacking, any of that kind of crap, campfires, I'm going to start lugging this thing around because this is got a, a tenth of the weight of the battery operated chainsaw that I have. And if I'm just going out somewhere to fix some little stuff, this, there's no reason why I wouldn't use this over that, you know? So uh, I'll be using this a lot around here for sure. I mean, if you live out, uh, where the California redwoods are, this thing might just be a child's toy. But for most people, they're dealing with underbrush and annoying saplings that sprout up where they're not supposed to and stuff like that. And this thing just obliterates those things. It's a, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's a home run for me anyway. So I'll be playing with this thing a lot more. You'll probably see it in future videos when I'm doing other things because this might become one of the, one of my go-tos. But yeah, <clears throat> I guess this is what it's all about right here, you know. I took some junk mail from the last two days, threw it in the middle, threw some shit in there, and just burned it. I'm just kind of chilling, man, you know. But this... Is maybe the end game, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, this is what it's all about right here. Just a little side note for anybody that gives a shit. <clears throat> this particular kind of fire is called a Napoleon stack. Before you make a square. And you have it sort of cascade inwards as it goes. Once you get it started, it's a... Uh, pretty effective. It's good for containing the fire too. Sometimes I do this. Sometimes I use other approaches, but just a little fire during the day. Or if you're going to grill some weenies or something, this is the way to do it right here. Because the fire uh, reflects inward on four angles. So it kind of becomes a little uh, vortex in the middle. It's good for cooking on. You know, if you had a tripod and you could hang a pot over it, that sort of thing, or a piece of meat on a sharp stick, this is the way to go right here. But yeah, this isn't a video about a campfire though, so maybe I'll save that for another day.